Welcome to Electron Line. In this video, we're going to talk about the orbit of the GPS satellites. The orbit is what we call a sub-geosynchronous orbit. A satellite that is in geosynchronous orbit keeps pace with the rotation of the Earth. In other words, if the Earth rotates in just under 24 hours, then it would take the satellite exactly just under 24 hours to make one trip around the world so that a position on the Earth and the satellite above that position would stay, well, I guess on a straight line relative to the satellite, the Earth, and the center of the Earth. In sub-geosynchronous orbit, the satellites travel faster, which means that they will make a trip around the Earth in less than 24 hours, significantly less. And it turns out that with the GPS system that we have, the satellites make exactly two trips around the world in the time that it takes the Earth to make one rotation. One rotation of a side real day, and do I have it up here somewhere? Yes. One rotation is 23 hours, 56 minutes, and 4 seconds, so half of that would be 11 hours, 58 minutes, and 2 seconds. That's exactly half of a side real day. What that means is the speed at which the satellites travel around the Earth can be calculated by this equation. The orbital velocity is equal to the square root of the universal gravitational constant, the mass of the Earth, and the radius of the orbit. If you go back to the radius of the orbit, if the average radius of the Earth is 6,371 kilometers, and the height above the Earth, the average height above the Earth of a satellite, is 20,194 kilometers, when we add those together, that is the average radius of a satellite going around the Earth, which is about four times the radius of the Earth. Keeping in mind that the orbits are not exactly circles, they're ellipses with a slight eccentricity of 0 0.02, which is about 2%, which means that it's closer to the approach and it's farthest approach to the Earth. It's about a 2% difference in, in that range. It does cause the satellite to have changes in the kinetic and potential energy, which means when it's closer to the Earth, it travels faster. When it's farther away from the Earth, it travels a little bit slower, so the speed is not a constant speed. Notice there are other GPS-type systems. Our system here, we call GPS is in exactly a 1 to 2 ratio, meaning it will make two rotations around the Earth for every one, or two trips around the Earth for every one rotation of the Earth. GLONASS, which is a Russian GPS system, well, it's on an 8 17 In other words, it's a little bit closer in such a way that it makes more trips relative to our GPS system. So it's actually a little bit closer than our system. And so for every eight rotations of the Earth, their satellites make 17 trips around the Earth. The Beidou system from China, for every nine rotations of the Earth, they make 17 trips, so they're actually a little bit farther away than our GPS system. The Galileo system, which is the European system, is even a little bit farther away. In other words, for every 10 rotations of the Earth, their satellites make 17 trips around the Earth. And the India system, which is in development, they plan to put their satellites in geosynchronous orbit. And I don't know at this point if they have any satellites up there yet, but that's their plan is to put all their satellites, GPS satellites, in geosynchronous orbit. Notice that the orbit is not as smooth as you would think. For one thing, of course, with the eccentricity not being equal to zero, it does speed up and slow down as it gets closer and farther away from the Earth in its orbit. But there's also other orbital perturbations. It turns out that the Earth, the Earth is not a complete perfect sphere. It is wider at the equator than it is from pole to pole. Because of that, as the satellites go around, and of course they don't go around perfectly around the equator, they're angled at 55 degrees with the equator, there will be what we call nodal precession because of the changes of the radius of the Earth. Also, we have the satellites have to contend with the sun's gravity, with the moon's gravity, and with the solar radiation pressure, all contributing to perturbations in the orbit of the satellites. As you will see later, that we want to keep very careful track of where the satellites are at, and because of that, we want to know the details of their orbit to be able to calculate and predict where those orbits are going to be so we can tell the GPS receivers, hey, this is where our satellites are going to be and try to keep a very accurate account of the orbits of the satellites. You can see that it's obviously not as easy as you may think. So now we have a little bit more of an understanding about the orbit of the satellites. Let's move on to our next topic in GPS.